Kill the Crastinators and Hello 14! This week the 14th Doctor has been announced in the form of Shooty Gatwa, best known, in fact only known, for Sex Education, a show that he's won seven awards for in its three seasons, including Best Breakthrough, Performance of the Year and the Scottish BAFTA for Best Actor in Television. Russell T. Davis is once again showing off his knack of nabbing the stars of Tomorrow before Tomorrow turns up. Carrie Mulligan, Felicity Jones, even Spider-Man himself, Andrew Garfield, all made an appearance during Russell T. Davis' first run before they smashed their way onto the big screen. This is all very exciting, especially after the last four years of talent being wasted, like beautiful fresh vegetables slowly turning to brown sludge in the bottom of a crisper. Sure! Chibnall's got one more episode to fuck everything up, and he will. This is a man who canonically destroyed the universe and then just <sighs> forgot that he did that, but that doesn't matter. Doctor Who marches forward, the past greying and fading away behind them as shiny new adventures lie in wait. There will be explosions, running laughter, tears, and whisper it, Daleks. November 2023 seems like a long way away, but he's a coming. Oh, he's a coming. Right, gaming news. I'm beginning to suspect that I wasn't the worst person to ever run Square Enix, as they've just announced the sale of Iados, Crystal Dynamics, and Square Enix Montreal, and their respective franchises, which include such little-known indie gems as Tomb Raider, Deus Ex, and Thief, for just $300 million to embrace a group. In a world of massive cash for studios, this is exactly the opposite of that. This is nothing. It's it's nothing. This is like going to a charity shop and finding a signed copy of the Bible for 50p. It's madness. So what are Square Enix going to do with all that cash? Well, they've said they're going to be investing it in blockchain and NFTs. You remember NFTs, right? That Ponzi scheme from a few months ago that now holds about as much value as a VHS tape containing nothing but half an episode of Modern Simpsons. Good luck, Square Enix. You're gonna fucking need it. Outward Definitive Edition is out next week, and I want to fling this onto a few more people's radars. I mean, first up, this is not a game for everyone. Not even me. I bounced off its Euro drink after just a few hours, but if you're one of those people... Those weird people who crave an incredibly broad and deep RPG while also wanting to have your ass handed back to you in almost every encounter and also able to put up with the fact that this game feels like an MMO from the year 2002, then this is the Morrowind replacement for you. Also, it has couch co-op, so if there's two of you out there, great. There's not. But if there was, theoretically... Great. Sultan Sacrifice has released. The sequel to one of the best 2D Souls likes is here, bringing more glorious combat bastardly bosses. And again, couch co op. Love that couch co op. Uh, it's downloading to me literally as I write this, so I can't go into too much detail because I uh, lack the skills of precognition. Um, but I just wanted you to know it was out because the first one was great. You probably could pick up the first one for quite cheap. FIFA! Oh, I don't care. EVE Online is collaborating with Microsoft Excel. Oh, God, I don't care about that either. AEW! There we go. All Elite Wrestling's upcoming game has had its title revealed as AEW Fight Forever. And it's revealed that everyone's favourite person is appearing in the game. That's right. AEW Fight Forever features referee Aubrey Edwards. I legitimately have a t-shirt with her on it, I'm not kidding. As well as, of course, you know, Adam Cole, Brian Danielson, CM Punk, Hikaru Shida, Ruby Soho, Chris Statlander, Young Bucks, Thunder Rosa, Nyla Rose, Darby and Sting, and... Kenny Omega! <laughs> I have no idea how good this game's gonna be, but goddamn, it's gonna be one hell of a roster rundown. Oh, and it's coming to PC as well, so... You know, mods should fill in any gaps, which there will be, because the AEW roster is stacked to fuck. Um, just, just want to say one thing, though. Dan Housen or I riot. Pers I will riot personally. By myself. Don't know how that works. Finally, this week, as much as the previous advice has been to not go to Ravenholm, no clip has dived right the fuck in, revealing an hour of footage from the long-lost Half-Life spin-off that you may not have known even existed. 
Ravenholm, which was created not by Valve, but by Arcane, the developers of Dishonored, Prey, and Deathloop. It's a fascinating look at an unfinished AAA game, something we rarely see in this industry, and I adore the little bits and pieces that aren't finalised. There's music from other games here, and missing animations there, and some of the zombies have a t-shirt that says, I am a placeholder on them. Go watch that video because, to be honest, it's great. And also, this one doesn't have that long left.